There are plenty of different top tier vehicles in War Thunder, let's get to know which is the best. We'll check every single top tier tank, rate them based on my personal kill death ratio, which doesn't always correspond to my opinion about them. I did 5 test drives, which do not count as I was just testing out the vehicle, and then I did 10 registered drives with each of them to get the statistics. We'll start with the weakest and move towards the absolute strongest. And the first on the list is Ariete AMV. I got only 2.54 kill death ratio with it which is almost three times less than the top three best ones to begin with Arieta has identical firepower to leo 2a5 with the same great dm53 shell it looks good has laser warning system great thermals but Arieta is the weakest of all top tier vehicles because of several reasons it has absolutely no armor which means that you have to be extremely careful as every single shot might be your last one even the 2s38 companion you know problem which is a problem for us and it's as big as these shells placed over here it doesn't matter how many shells you take they're placed here first which means that every single hit in this region is a guaranteed ammo cook-off so out of nine deaths with arieta five were due to ammo detonation which instantly one shot at me so survivability is kind of not existent at all you have to be extremely careful while playing with it feels like 11.0 in 11.7 battles mobility wise it's average over Overall, there are plenty of vehicles better than Ariete with 11.0 battle rating. So I recommend this vehicle to very experienced players that just got bored and want a challenge. But it does require a very slow, methodical, calculated gameplay, which for my playstyle was absolute torture. On top of that, it was extremely boring, which is a shame because the tank itself looks amazing. The next vehicle managed to bring me 2.77 kill death ratio, and it's Leclerc, which has an awesome Auto loader giving a six second reload which feels great it also has decent shell good thermals mobility wise it's not special at all earlier electric is a bit faster as it is lighter but this one has extra armor which doesn't help at all not even against atgms or heat shells it's just it just makes you slower that's it also if you ever meet leclerc from the back you can just shoot his cheeks with a machine gun and you might destroy his engine same works with ariete this combination of no armor being big and kind of slowish is a pretty bad combination especially whenever you have only three crew members as you can easily one shot by just shooting it in the center plus it has a slow turret rotation and not the best zoom so i don't recommend playing it unless it gets moved to like 11.3 then it will be amazing the third tank and the first one to bring me to kill death ratio of three was challenger td i personally really enjoyed playing with it maybe i was just getting horrible maps all the time i don't know why my kd was so low with it it was a great tank but that's where the stats brought it it was like finally britain got a tank that's actually worth getting the most comfortable zoom in the game you can be extremely effective in close range because it is very wide and you can snipe people with it with this massive zoom ballistics are so good that i had to change my crosshair as the lines were placed so densely that it would completely cover all enemy tanks also challenger has a pretty good turret which sometimes might withstand a shot but there are issues as well mobility wise it is standard british one meaning the challenger left the pub and is now moving slowly turret rotation is one of the absolute worst ones in these brs and cannon lifting speed well let me just say you will definitely get killed because of that survivability is actually not bad it can take a shot but the problem is it has no armor in the hull meaning that you must always cover it otherwise you will get one shot it over there reload speed is just like leo so standard good one i personally love this tank but statistically it plays very low next one on the list is Merkava, another favorite of mine, which brought 3.18 KD. Boshi! Thick boy! Merkava has lots of antennas which are great at giving away your position and from the position of your camera you will look like this while playing with it. One great thing I love about it is hard kill system which saves you from helicopter ATGMs. It's so refreshing it's just crazy. Survivability is like sometimes you will live like a 
raghead. It's just impossible to kill. It withstands every single shot, no problem. And sometimes you get one shot at three matches in a row. As big and thick Merkava is, it's pretty fast for such a massive size, which is crazy. Like it can go 40 miles per hour, which is 64 kilometers per hour in reverse, which is just insane. And it's as fast as it can go forwards. Merkava sometimes feels amazing, but sometimes you just get tired of one shot at good vehicle you can get it but there are better ones CNBT 4.125 KD with one of the Chinese boys at first I thought that it might be like BVM except it had hard kill system and maybe some other drawbacks not the case guys straight off the bat I think it's bugged or something and I'm talking about era of CNVT. Look, it should withstand Leo 2A7 straight to the hull. Protection is written to be more than enough for a bounce, yet it goes straight through it. And in battles that was exactly the case, no armor except for the turret, good cannon that for some reason doesn't deal a lot of damage, which was very frustrating, especially when you have to send in a couple of shots, yet you yourself get one shotted all the time. CNVT has no survivability at all, and even even if this armor would work, it's still very, and I mean very bad. And actually, it's a downgrade from WZ-1001, which is crazy. Previous vehicle, way stronger than this one. Still, it has great high explosive shells that can one-shot most of the vehicles at the top of the head. And I really love the hard kill system. Helicopters give up on you. They think you're like desyncing or something. It felt amazing. It also saved me from enemy heat shell once. As a defense from projectile, that are flying at up to 1530 yards per second or 1400 meters per second which is phenomenal but there's only four of them so it's not completely broken normal reverse speed which is, was enough to drive behind the cover very bad reload speed as every single enemy reloads faster than you except if it's t90m as it has the same reload speed as you that means you'll have to be very careful with your shot placement because if you bounce you're pretty much dead. All in all, the other Chinese boy was way more enjoyable and we'll get to him in just a second. CNVT is average, nothing special for top tier vehicle, you can get it, it's definitely playable. Abram Sep V2 with 4.3 KD. Technically Abram Sep is better as it is lighter because you can take off Tusk which doesn't help against anything and has none of this which is great at giving your position away, covering your screen and serves as additional surface for high explosive shells. Despite all of that, I played Sep V2 because it's the top of the top and I personally really enjoyed playing with Abrams. As crazy as it sounds, I actually loved it, except for one big issue. The first thing you have to do before playing with it is to take off mine protection as it is absolutely useless. So yeah, take it off, make yourself faster. The greatest thing about Abrams is firepower as you have a great cannon with phenomenal penetration, which is better than Leo 2A5 DM53. Also, 5.3 second reload speed is beautiful. If somehow someone doesn't pen you, you win. The problem is that they will penetrate you and most likely one-shot you. So that means you have to flank dudes and avoid face-to-face -face action. And flanking is more than possible because as big as Abrams is, it's pretty mobile and decently fast. Targeting speed is top tier level. Thermals are great. Vertical guidance is phenomenal. So what is that massive problem? Well, it's called them 1A1 clickbait and it being in your team. It's a grand but profitable mistake that happened in War Thunder. These level 10s have absolutely no chance of playing against guys that have played thousands of battles turned their top tier MVPs. My win rate with Abrams was 15%. Two minutes in, quite literally every match, your team is dead. The only victories I had were the ones where I almost got nukes in. So if you play for victories, avoid this tank at all costs. All in all, Abrams is a great vehicle and would definitely end up higher on the list, but it landed here. And now we meet TKX with 4.8 KD. Man, I just love this tank. One of my personal favorites. It just has that magical four second reload, which is so great and feels so amazing. The problem hits you if you're very active and you will run out of shells and the massive million year long reload begins. Whenever playing with TKX, I used the vines to lift its cheeks and lower the front quite regularly because I just wanted that extra vertical guide. 
Titans, which did earn me a couple of extra kills. Also, brakes on this thing, literally insane. Straight from the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. You'll have to get used to driving with it. It turns and blocks tracks so aggressively, it's crazy. I don't know how braking so hard doesn't knock out your crew. And it will be uncomfortable at first, but you'll get used to it. How is it not the best? It sounds like it has everything. Everything except armor and aiming speed. You will always have to assist aim by turning the hull. And aiming speed is extremely important in these steers. Slower aiming speed ends up in situations where you die just because you were a millisecond too late and that happened to me a couple of times. And I usually died because I got too overconfident with my reload speed, which was my mistake. And because Takey X has little to no armor and a combination of three crew members is that you will get one shotted quite frequently. And out of five deaths, I got one shotted by helicopters three times. So most likely this tank would end up higher on the list, but it was a national day of helicopters and they love targeting you. Great tank, you can definitely get it, but you'll feel way more comfortable at 11.0 with Type 90 or Tiki XP as they are the same, but you fight against weaker opponents. ZTZ99A delivering 5.5 KD. To be completely honest, I was blown away. I thought that it would be a weak vehicle and would end up lower in the list, but I was completely wrong. It is a very similar tank to T80 BBM, but there are a few differences. To begin with, ZDZ99A is extremely mobile. I mean, it's really fast, not only forwards, but going backwards as well, as it can reach a total of 21 miles per hour or 34 kilometers per hour, which is just perfect. Armor-wise, it can withstand a shot as it has a pretty well-armored turret, except for the gun mainland. And it does have a strong impenetrable part in the hull, which can't be penetrated even by a Leo 2A7. So if they're shooting at you randomly, you have a good chance of bouncing. But as soon as they start aiming for the weak parts, they are pretty easy to hit. Trust me, they will one-shot you. As survivability on this tank is just absolutely non-existent, I think it would greatly benefit from bushes. However, I didn't use them to make it more fair. There are three issues with this tank. First one is zoom, which is more than usable for close range, but far range sniping is pretty awkward. Second is aiming speed, especially vertical one. It's not bad, but it could be better. And the third one and the most important one is reload speed. 7.1 seconds mean that if you bounce a shot, you gotta run away. On the bright side, you have the speed to do so. On the sad side, you could have gotten a free kill. And the fourth massive issue I had with this is damage. For some reason, it felt like I was shooting with airsoft BBs. Very strange because if the damage would have been more stable, it would definitely land higher. Oh, by the way, the thing that really helped me increase survivability is turning away the turret from the enemy after the shot died my weak cannon melee. Overall, ZDZ99A is a BVM, but faster with less armor and longer reload speed and worse zoom and worse saving speed and worse survivability but it's still pretty good because speed and armor combo helps a lot i have absolutely no idea why my stats were bigger with it than Tiki X, but i have suspicions 5.5 kd with t90m i'll be honest with you i personally didn't like it i love how beautiful it looks but i didn't like the gameplay reverse speed was uncomfortable it's just annoying. I couldn't be overly aggressive with it just the way I like it, because whenever you go in aggressively, you die. As with T90M, I couldn't run away after overextending or getting info that there are more enemies than I expected. So while playing with T90M, I had to readjust my game style and became way more passive, and that is the reason why I had better kill-death ratio. It's just because I was way more careful to not overextend. In other words, I was camping more randomly had great teammates that would actually save me, which was wholesome. The tank itself has good speed, great survivability, unless you're facing experienced players that place their shots well, then you'll just get one-shotted. But as long as you keep moving, the armor just becomes magical. And it starts withstanding crazy stuff, like it even withstood this massive
massive bomb that was dropped on me more more like in me and i was fine after the thing is i like hardcore one-shotting enemies and i like being one-shotted by them as well as that makes the game fair aggressive active and most importantly stable and it was just exact opposite of that it has great cannon phenomenal shells especially high explosive ones that can one-shot all the cheeky turret only players which it counters perfectly so you can definitely take four high explosive shells and shoot at these optical devices to one-shot abrams's all leos and challengers basically everyone you face but don't shoot at the front one as it will end up eating the shell and dealing no damage also thermals are amazing amazing paired with actually really good and comfortable zoom for close and long range aiming speed is average and there are quite a few vehicles that have it better and the most important negative about this vehicle besides reverse speed is reload speed which is 7.1 seconds long and it being an auto loader means that you can't reduce it because of this reason if you trade bounces with anyone or maybe get unlucky and deal no damage to the guy you can consider yourself dead as you can't run away and they will always load faster than you, breaking your cannon with the next shot. Overall, T9EM is a solid, good tank, definitely makes 11.7 USSR richer, but there are quite a few better vehicles than it, and it does have its own drawbacks. Top 3 best of the best is T80 BVM. Even though my KD was just a tiny bit higher, being 5.55, I had way more fun, way more kills, and way more deaths as well. And that was while being in half stock condition which kind of was unfair in terms of statistics and comparison with others i do agree with that but it was still more than enough to get a nuke gameplay was just filled with fun aggressive gameplay just rushing and throwing slugs at each other you see a camper or a cheeky boy throw him that high explosive and send him back to the respawn great speed great mobility reverse speed is kind of okay -ish. it's enough to run behind a cover but it's not enough to completely change the entire position of course, if you overextend or make a stupid mistake, you'll see a death screen, as it's pretty easy to one-shot the BVM. However, you do have armor to a degree, and if you're moving fast while having armor, it makes you really, and I mean really hard to kill. Aiming speed is phenomenal, thermals are great, zoom is good, it's small, I mean it has pretty much everything apart from survivability and phenomenal reverse speed. Reload speed being 6.5 seconds is okay, but Every single Leo with experts, Leclercs, and Abramses and Takey Xs will load faster than you. So be careful and land your shots precisely, otherwise it might backfire. Personally, I love it. Very fun, strong vehicle. Even though the difference statistically is very small between T80 BVM and T90, they feel so very different in gameplay. It's just absolutely crazy. Couple milliseconds in reload, couple miles per hour faster makes a world of a difference difference definitely worth getting and the top two is leo 2a7 5.85 kd the most challenging part with this boy is flying that new jaguar a with no flares starting from airfield with audio informing enemies about you and them leaving their vehicles to take panzer to counter you that's the most difficult part the easy part is all the five minutes before where you completely dominate your opponents destroy everyone left and right bound shots eat the rest of the shots like their candy great reload speed allows you to win bounce battles against t90s chinese top tiers if you have aces t80s and lecklers also enter that list targeting speed max penetration highest in the game mobility is decent great reverse speed it does feel a bit heavy so take off the mine protection as it is useless what a great vehicle overall what else do you need you can be aggressive defensive you can do whatever you want also great thermals it doesn't have the engine smoke which really helps to bait out enemies that's the only thing it lacks and more speed is always good absolutely worth getting the only enemy you will have issues is another leo but that leo changed its nickname because the original was already taken and it's called sdrv plus which takes the first place with 6.14 kd it's pretty much the same leo but boy she thick boy also it somehow ended up a bit lighter and faster forwards as well as backwards and for that it has less penetration which i personally didn't feel at all as i had no issues when it came to pen 
penetrating enemy armor. And you have only four smoke salvos, which isn't always enough. And that is because STRV is extremely hard to kill. And situations where you have to throw smoke and run away happen multiple times in a match. And there's helicopters from which you throw smoke to cover yourself. Well, it's very useful, especially for this vehicle, but it's also very limited. Besides that, it is just perfect. Again, take off mine protection and it is completely useless. Go in and just release havoc against the enemy team. Such a great, comfortable vehicle. Truly amazing. And if you prefer penetration over speed, go for 2A7. Basically, both have the same gameplay. Absolutely worth getting. So here is the list of my statistical KD rankings and here is my personal strength ranking by how it felt for me personally. We're done.